Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today, the battle for the soul of collecting has begun. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about physical media collecting as a whole. We are starting to really see why we cannot allow digital storefronts, digital ownership to be the way to go. Because California has just passed a new law that states if you have a button on your web page, they're kind of outlawing it in California. They're saying you can't call it buy or purchase. Because what you're saying is buying and purchasing implies that you own it and you do not own these products when you buy digitally. So California is the first state, I believe, anywhere in the world who's done this, who say, no, call it something else. Call it long-term licensing. Call it something else that implies you don't own this. Or put a big button next to it that says, you do not own this product. Which, let's put it bluntly, they're not, stores aren't going to do this. But why is it significant that California's done this? Well, if you look at California, what's in California? You have all the big headquarters, Silicon Valley, you have all these massive corporations like Apple and so on. And that's Cupertino, so that's California as well. You have all the big studios, Paramount. You have all these big companies all in California stationed. So for them to change that is a massive win for physical media because it will start showing people in the online space who say, hey, it's all good to own digitally. It's all good to own digitally. But hey, you don't actually own it. They can take it off you at a second's notice. You don't own that copy that you've spent money on under the implication that you've bought it. And when I'm talking about the soul of collecting and the soul of physical media, I want to talk about something like Horizon Zero Dawn. Now, I don't know if anyone's noticed this. I don't know if anyone's covered it yet. But this game has been recently announced for remastering on the PS5. Now... It's a great game, one of my favorite games that I've played through. It's one of the absolute best games I've ever seen. And I think this is one of the one of the pillars of PlayStation going forward. It's one of the games that can get people to play the PlayStation. Yes, I know this is available on Steam, and I know they're putting it online and stuff like that on other storefronts. But when you play on the PlayStation, you're getting a better experience with Horizon because PlayStation's optimizing it for the consoles. But since they've remastered, I've noticed something on the storefront where I had a look at the price before and I own this digitally because I was like, oh yeah, cool. I want to see how much it is. And it was around like, I think 20 bucks Australian, 25, somewhere around there. And they've put it up to a pretty high amount now. It's like 50 or so. It's like, it's insane. It's like, I don't understand why they would charge more now. It's like, okay. Yes, you're announcing the remaster, but why put up the old version? And I know there's an upgrade cost there. I know people are going to buy the old version and upgrade. I guess that's probably why they put the cost up. But come on, it's when did this game come out? This game came out in like, what, 2018 or something? 2017? Somewhere around there. It was on the PS4 life cycle. And now it's suddenly jumped in price because they've announced a remaster and they don't want people getting the loophole of, hey, you can buy this another way. So, yeah, you got to be cautious of stuff like that. Like, this is something that's readily, readily available, the complete edition. It's readily available in many stores around the world in physical media. You can probably get this for about 10, 15 bucks in Australia, like at EB Games. I think I've seen that for about 10 bucks. But, you know, you can, pretty, you can get that pretty confidently, pretty cheaply pre-owned. And yet, PlayStation's put the storefront up. And this is what I'm talking about. With monopolies, you cannot rely on these companies to do the right thing by you, the consumer. And yes, I know this is not a healthy look as well. Having all this physical media is not a healthy look. I get it. But it's also a stopper against industries like digital storefronts and industries like studios saying, hey, you don't own Discover anymore because if you owned it on the PlayStation Store, you have our, our license has expired, so you're not going to have access anymore. Now, obviously, they reverted on that thing in, I believe it was the UK, but still, the fact that they could do it should show that, hey, we need to be very cautious with how much control we give these big companies. I mean, little things like Disney not putting Blu rays and physical media out in Australia anymore. 
should be a huge red flag. And I'm still importing some Disney releases. It's not, I'm not picking up every one because I don't really care for modern Disney all that much. But, you know, when Deadpool and Wolverine comes out, I'm definitely going to import that because that's something I want to keep my Marvel collection going. And I think that's one of the better Marvel movies that come out in the recent years. But, you know, the fact that you don't own it means that if you want to watch that movie, you either need to buy it digitally or you need to have Disney Plus. And I think that is wrong. I want ownership over that content. I like that content. I'm willing to pay for that content. And I should have ownership on a physical form if I should choose to go that way. Now, recently, and I will do a video about this in a couple of days, I picked up an OLED Switch. And why did I go and buy the OLED Switch? Well, I've been playing the Switch Lite a lot, that Switch Lite I showcased in a previous video. I still think the Switch Lite is one of the better consoles that uh, Nintendo's come out with. It feels like the perfect medium between what a Game Boy was and almost so offering the capabilities of a console. But while not having the console added on or external takeoff handle things, or controllers I should call them. <laughs> But the Switch OLED, I bought that because I want the best performance of this generation in terms of the Switch. And I also believe that it's time to start playing some of these on a TV. Like I've been playing Mario Odyssey the past week and it's been really, really good because it's a different thing. And the thing with Nintendo is they're very big in the uh, physical media space. So each time you buy a physical game from Nintendo, you get an actual cartridge. Now, on the case, they actually have some things code included if you don't have, if it doesn't have the cartridge in there. But that's to let you know ahead of time, hey, you're not getting a physical cartridge. Nine times out of ten, you can play without the cartridge. You can play without the downloading anything, a patch. That's because Nintendo are quality controlling, and their big focus has been on games. And to own physical games is a whole other level of ownership. Most times, look with Nintendo, they know what their market is. They're marketing to children, large part. The games on Nintendo are very much family friendly. But, you know, giving a kid a digital code saying, hey, you're going to download it on the store, is a lot different to saying, hey, here's the game. Here is Horizon Zero Dawn. Go play it. It's a lot different. And I think Nintendo get that. You want to give them a product that they can put in at a second's notice, not have to download a patch, and just play instantly. That's what I liked about Mario Odyssey. As soon as I put it in my OLED Switch, my new OLED Switch, it just worked. No downloads, no 10 gig updates, nothing. Just optimized, ready to go. I had the same experience with Zelda. As soon as I put Zelda in the console, my Switch Lite back in the day, or a couple of months ago, it just worked. And this is the thing. I like the whole experience of owning it because it does put a, um, it does put a bit more ownership into it. Now, also, previous editions, like, I can say something off over here. I'm just going to grab it. Give me two seconds. Now, Minecraft. This game has been so much remastered, given new versions, given new coat of paints, all this other stuff throughout the years. I believe the version now that is on every console is Bedrock. But what happens if you don't like Bedrock? What happens if you were a fan of the old console legacy editions like I am? And Console Legacy Editions was very much based on the Java of Minecraft. And you can say what you will about Java, but it gets a bad rap. But the Console Legacy Editions done a lot of things a lot better. I think 4J Studios, was it 4J Studios? Yeah, 4J Studios did a lot of things right with Minecraft, such as the simplified menus. With modern Minecraft, it just feels like a big bloated mess at most times. And I've went back to playing this version, not PS3, but like the PS4 Legacy Edition that is in editions if you owned it before a certain point. I don't believe editions will show up on newer buys. But, you know, if you owned a disc of the PS4, you can pop that in and play that as it was intended. The PS3 especially as well. Although this will not work on a PS4. And let's get that right. P PlayStation doesn't have backwards compatibility from PS3 to PS4. But I can still go back and play an older version of Minecraft on a PS3 if I want. And I don't have to install a patch. Like, yes, there are patches on here that could get it up to a higher, a newer release or a newer firmware, but I can choose not to download it and play what's on the disc, which will be a disc that came out in... What's the date on the disc here? It came out in... Let's look at the cover. 2014. So, you know, I could play a 2014 
game, you know, I could play it as it was released. I don't have to download anything, I can play it as messed up as the game was, you know, I don't have to install that patch. And yes, I know I'm being very, I'm ranting a little bit, but do you understand what I'm saying about physical media? The options it allows you, the ownership and the choices it allows you to make. Yes, not everyone is going to have a collection like this or a big collection of games, but let's say you just liked Minecraft and you just wanted to play a simplified version of Minecraft without 40 different menus to jump through to get your world loaded. Then you can go back to an older version. That's available on the console Legacy Editions. And I've said it about Terminator a bunch of times, if they change a movie, ownership also allows you to go back and watch the Blu-ray version. Ownership allows you to go back and watch the DVD or Laserdisc or VHS. Owning the stuff you love is a stopper against industries saying, hey, we think this is the better version. We don't care what you have to say. We think this is the version you'll watch. And if you don't like it, well, you don't like it. You're not going to watch the movie then. I think that's the wrong way to go about it. I believe if they're going to remaster something, they should at least give you the option to say, hey, opt out. I don't want to upgrade to the 4K version. I want to access that version, the older version. But what happens when they upgrade the 4K? Like if a movie suddenly gets converted to 4K, on the Apple Store and Google Play Store and all this other stuff, it automatically upgrades your copy. And what happens if it's the transfer is just not good? You're stuck with that one now because they have said, hey, this is the version you're going to watch. California is really starting to fight for the soul of collecting and collectors and what it means to actually say, you don't own this. I think it's something to watch. And as my phone tilts down again, sorry, I have a really crap amount at the moment. <laughs> but yeah, as we fight for the soul of physical media collecting and the soul of ownership overall, I think this is going to be an interesting space to watch going forward and how California implements it and how big tech giants like Google, like Apple, like even on Netflix and that, if, oh no, no, that, not Netflix, I mean Amazon. Watch how those big companies implement such a change and say, hey, okay, we can't call it purchase. We can't call it buy anymore. Long-term lease, maybe? Long-term rental? I don't know. But we'll have to see what is said about it. But yes, this is a win for physical media. And I think this is a win for the industry. Like California are doing a big win. Like this is massive for that big that big piece of legislation that's went through. Now, obviously, will it be as significant as what happened in the EU with forcing Apple to go USB-C? Loving my USB-C phone, by the way, my iPhone 16. The USB-C is really freaking awesome. <laughs> but, you know, they're also introducing, hey, we want removable batteries back in these phones. EU is really doing some good stuff as well with tech. But we could see that from California because they have all the big studios in California based. They have a lot of the big tech companies with Silicon Valley. They have a lot of big stuff in California that they can easily force to abide by certain rules. This is a win for physical media. This is a win for allowing people to know what they're actually buying. And yeah, tell me what you think, what you make of it. Do you think it's right that because the remaster's coming out that Sony suddenly upped the price to 40 or $50? I don't think that's right. I don't think it's right that just because Mojang have uh, ownership of the game fully, that they can just discount and erase all of 4J's work, 4J Studios. I don't feel it's right that, hey, if a lawsuit's happen, and we will briefly mention this, but something like Ready to Die, Notorious B.I.G.'s album, and I know everything that's happening at the moment, I'm aware of the baby oil. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about? A lot of the samples were changed in this album when it was released beyond 2005, 2006 because they got sued and obviously Bad Boy Records had to had to change a lot of the samples that were used, like Machine Gun Funk. They had to erase a lot of the samples and you don't have certain hooks in there that were in the original album. Now obviously we'll put B.I.G. back down because there's another person who worked on that album that we're not going to mention. But yeah... Don't, don't victimize the victims, by the way. I've seen a lot of memes out there about Usher and Justin Bieber. They were victims. Leave them alone. Although, I don't know about Usher. He may be in the same ballpark as, um, as Biebs, uh, as 
the other one, but we'll wait and see. We'll see what the, all the lawsuit says and all the court documents and that. We'll see what that says. I'm not making any judgment until I see more information. Uh, okay, so yeah, let's get out of that. Let's transition out of that topic because that's a toxic topic. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Is this a win for ownership? Is this a win? Like, are you more, are you more likely to go out and buy a physical copy of your favorite games and movies now that it's going to be clearly labeled that you don't own them, you don't own the actual content, they can take them for you at a second's notice. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys, and I'll get back to you in the next one. Peace.